Good morning. Will you please rise for the call to worship? Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty expanse. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please join us in singing our first hymn, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, then time shall be no more, and the glory breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saint of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up setting sun, let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. going to continue this whole eschatological uh, theme here with another hymn, Mansion Over the Hilltop. Just over the hilltop 
Yes, good morning and welcome to our worship hour on this Mother's Day here at Zion Free Lutheran. And we have been greeted with some good music, haven't we? Yes, we have. And so thanks to all who are responsible for that. As we uh, continue our service, then, shall we uh, uh, read our scripture lessons from James 5, 16 through 20. James 5, 16 through 20. And we read... And the prayer of faith will save those who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man <coughs> with a nature like ours. And he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. And then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders, wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Yes, we are. Pay close attention to the verse 18 there. He prayed again and heaven gave rain and the earth bore its fruit. And we'll be praying for, uh, for rain as we uh, have each Sunday. Uh, and a little bit later in our prayer time. Then if you would turn to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Matthew 6, beginning at verse 5 through verse 13. And shall we stand in respect for the reading of the gospel? Matthew 6, beginning at verse 5. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they might be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you go in, <coughs> when you pray, 
go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need even before you ask him. Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, <coughs> but deliver us from evil. Here ends the reading of our scripture lessons for this Sunday. Shall we unite in confession of our faith as we find it in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Sins, dreads, 
Thank you for that, uh, another beautiful, special music. How I think we need to be reminded of that uh, often as we see a world full of all kinds of goodies and we wish and we want and we covet and we work hard for, but nothing uh, that we can know can compare with knowing Jesus. We're going to have our prayer time right now. I didn't have a children's sermon, but the more I thought about it, I thought this could be really entertaining or embarrassing to have the children come up and then question them about their moms. Maybe things would come out that would be best left at home. And so I... Uh, Decided not to do that, and we'll have our prayer time. I like to play it safe. Our prayer needs. Let's keep praying for rain, Pastor Carr writes. Pastor Carr and his family are in uh, Minneapolis for the graduation from our Bible college of their eldest daughter. And so he asked if I would uh, fill in for him today. Carl and uh, Gisla Wold continue to pray for them. Carl's in the Tioga Hospital. Gisla's in the Mandan Hospital. Bree Rose and her struggles with her eye, specifically for pain management. And we look forward to seeing her out on the basketball court playing here this next year. Lisa Powers has been struggling with her health again and continues to need our prayers. Pastor Peter Guadalupe, who was here in Tioga two different times for our outreach services about seven years ago, has a daughter named Jasmine who is a young mom with two young children plus a five-month-old baby. She was just diagnosed with a rare form of cancer and will have surgery May 12th. We need to pray for a successful sur surgery in all the cancer, that the cancer would be removed from her body. No, is that tomorrow, 12th? Wednesday. Wednesday. See, since I've retired, I have no idea uh, what day it is or day of the week, and it really doesn't matter to me, but 
Yeah. And then uh, praise uh, God that Lyle Tandy has been released from the hospital here in Tioga. And then pray for little Elijah, who has uh, all kinds of health concerns. And pray for him and grace for uh, his grandma Debbie and her daughter Kim as they continue to care for Elijah. (coughs) The love offering opportunity for that. Uh, in the back here as you go out today, a uh, love offering for John Walla. And continued grace and healing for uh, Tanya Hoydal, John Walla, Debbie Iverson, Craig Postovit, Elroy Hansen, Andrew Rosaka, Evelyn Copes, and Sally Rice. And then for Vernon Knutson, Lenore Tandy, Diane Hansen, and Larry Peterson. And uh, so let's just uh, bow in prayer. And are there any others that need to be added to this? Yes. Pastor, uh, yeah. just a clarification on the John and Sheila Walla, the love basket yeah. in the back end. Yeah. Uh, the purpose behind that is John and Sheila took unpaid leave to assist with Carl and Gisla. So it's not so much about medical expenses that John already has, it's to help them out in that endeavor. Okay, thank you for that clarification. And then one more thing, uh, all you ladies, you moms, uh, are free to pick up a flower. You're invited to pick up a flower on your way out of church today. Kids, You uh, painted some flower pots. Make sure you take them home uh, with you, too. Let's pray. Oh, God, we come before you today just realizing how dependent we are upon you and your mercy and your grace for the rain that we so desperately need for health to live and take another breath. We give you thanks for your mercy to us. And Lord, we have a whole bunch of people who are ailing physically. A lot of them are suffering in other other, uh, ways and we pray that you would Hear our prayers as we embrace them and say, help them, Lord. We pray for rain. Oh, Lord, the uh, ground is so dry. And in this farm country, we need need the rain. And so we call upon you and that we too might give you glory for that rain. All these things we, we present before you, Lord, and bless us as we worship and hear your word. In Jesus' name, amen. As you are seated, let's, let's continue to pray. Let's sing a song. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. And I'm anxious to see what you sound like up here, too. But sing parts, but we need to pray this. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me.
Well, as I was wondering, what should I preach on? Lord, what would you have me to share on Mother's Day? And uh, I thought a very timely subject would be, what does the Bible tell us about getting our shots for COVID-19? We could be here all day because that's all you hear. Some say get the shots, some say don't, but I'm not going to talk about that. I was riding in my car in Minneapolis and I, I was listening to a radio uh, commentator or something and uh, he mentioned uh, about homes. He said in, in some homes, the uh, the mom is, a, no, in the public, the mom is an angel. Everybody says, what an angel, and at home, she's a demon. And I thought, that's not going to go over very well on Mother's Day. We've got to say something nice about moms, because this is a very, very special time for us. But as you consider Mother's Day, you also have to realize that it includes the home. That is, in my whole career as a uh, pastor, that has been a burden on my heart. The homes, the homes of our nation, and I believe that unless the homes in our nation get straightened out, we are, we are in for a uh, far worse than we're seeing now. And so we need to talk about homes. And uh, there you are. Yeah, yeah, I haven't done this for a long time, so I have to kind of remember how to, how to preach. Of all the gifts that life has to offer, a loving mother is the greatest of them all. Of all the gifts that life has to offer, a loving mother surpasses, is the greatest of them all. I got a great blessing when I was born into my family with Gertie and Art. Many of you knew them. And uh, what, a, what a blessing it was. And as I considered once, uh, we would we'd go to a country school. We went to a country school not too far from the farm. And every day... She would pack in my lunch pail two buns with butter, a thermos of cocoa, a piece of cake, can't forget that, and a couple cookies. And one day, if she got into a real health kick, she'd put an apple in there. <laughs> but you know, uh, you think, what a, that's a poor diet. Well, let me tell you, when I was uh, going to grade school, I was pretty thin. Uh, then I got married. And uh, it, it changed from there on. I think we must have put more peanut butter and jelly on the buns or something, but... I had a great mom. And she was always so faithful in tending to us as a family. Me and my brother Larry and sister Colleen and, and Lee. Uh, Lee took the most work, I think. But he turned out okay. <laughs> yeah. But I wanted to leave one thing with you if you don't remember anything else. My heroes, 
And I could get into some controversy with this one too. But my heroes are the stay-at-home moms. I doubt if many of us as men could put up with staying home with the kids and taking care of the house and cl uh, cooking and cleaning and whatever needs to be done. We just, men don't have it in them. God gave a, a, a woman an extra strength, I think, to be able to do what she has to do. So, kudos to those of you that are stay-at-home moms. And those of you that are not stay-at-home moms, you might have some good reasons why uh, you have to be out working. But I just think... I wouldn't want anybody else to raise my kids. And uh, there sure would be a lot easier, though, than staying home with them all day. But that's not the point there either. I remember I was walking home from school. Larry and I were walking home from school one spring day and uh, with two other guys in the community. We were walking up the road, and they decided that Larry and I could not walk on the road with them. And so they shooed us down into the ditch and off into the field next to the road, and we were kind of ticked off. We were little, and they were big. And so Mom didn't know this, but I picked up a rock and threw at them. Well they decided they could throw back. And so they threw rocks at us. But my mom was watching through the kitchen window or something, and pretty soon here came a car tearing out of our driveway and down the road and dust all over the place and slammed the brakes right by those two guys. And boy, did she ever tell them what to do. And I thought, yes, yes, go, Mom. That's my mother. I never did tell her that we had started it. <laughs> because I figured anybody that was mean enough to push us off the road deserved what they got. I remember one time I was driving uh, to Los Angeles. And we, uh, I left home, and you know, to get ready to pack and drive off, far off, it's it's kind of a tension-filled time, and I, I, I got kind of owly, grumpy with mom, and sassy maybe. I don't know exactly, but all the way I drove uh, through uh, Montana, I it, it would really bothered me that I had said that to her. And so I stopped someplace in western Montana and dialed the operator. Hello, this is a collect call from Roger Olson. You know, that was before the cell phones and everything. In fact, when I was back there, it was practically before phones, but uh, she accepted the phone call and I said, Mom, I'm so sorry for what I said, how rude I was to you. And uh, I felt a lot better. I think she did too. Maybe some of the best things we can say on Mother's Day. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? In 1 Peter 3, 7, if you have your Bibles, you can follow it, but I'll read it for you. I said everybody's involved, the husbands, fathers, mothers, <coughs> children. Husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel since they are heirs with you of the grace of life so that your prayers may not 
be hindered. Wow. Husbands, on this Mother's Day, are you uh, understanding of your wife? Do you live with her in an understanding way? Showing honor to her? Or is she someone that's inferior that you can slap around or tell off? They are heirs with us of the grace of life. That's what life should be. That's what a marriage has to be, is full of grace. Because as good as my wife is, she's not a perfect wife. And I'm a, I'm a little bit better husband, but uh, I hope she isn't watching this on TV. Yeah. We're just people. And we need to be graceful to each other. Treat one another with grace. And here's something else I want you men to consider so that your prayers may not be hindered. Do you realize what the scripture is saying here? If you are uh, not treating your wife right, with love and understanding and honor, your prayers may be hindered. And sometimes that's why A lot of people don't get any place in their Christian walk because they haven't treated those who deserve their love and mercy and grace with such. In Proverbs 31, now I'm going to lay a heavy load on you. You know this one, don't you? Proverbs 31. This gets me tired just reading it, so I won't read it all. Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 31. An excellent wife, who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp (coughs) does not go out at night. Goodness sakes, when does she sleep? And I'll read on a little bit. Number 22, she makes bed coverings for herself. And her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. (coughs) She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up. This is, this is the neat part of it. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Here's what he says. Many women have done excellently, but oh, you, you beat them all. You surpass them all. I think that's a good thing for that we could say to our wives. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. The 
There's a song that my kids sang when they were little in VBS and stuff and said, what's the nicest thing about your mother? It goes, what's the nice thing about your mother? She cooks and she sews and she washes all my clothes. Mothers are like that. Yes, they are. Mothers are like that, near and far. So what's the nicest thing about a mother? That you stay, you'll find anywhere. What's the nicest thing, the very nicest thing? It's that she's always there. That's a, that's a neat, neat thought. That mom is available, she's always there. Providing a sense of security. Now let's go to the kids. In confirmation, when I was teaching it, I had uh, the member, memorize a verse. Maybe some of you that are older now can remember this. But Proverbs 30, 17. Listen, you young people. The eye that mocks a father and despises to obey his mother will be picked out by the ravens of the valley and eaten by the vultures. The eye that despises, mocks a father, and despises to obey his mother, that eye will be picked out by the ravens of the valley and eaten by the vultures. What's he talking about here? All of us know what we see when we drive in the country. Roadkill. <coughs> Skunks. Dogs. Cats. All kinds of creatures. Deer. I have known so many people in their lives that had everything going for them. Gifted. Hopes for the future and all of that. But they rebelled. They rebelled against their father and their mother. And yes, they became roadkill. Wasted lives. Wasted. In Ephesians, the Bible says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. <laughs> Why should you listen to mom and dad? Because it's right, the Bible says. It is right. Honor your father and mother, for this is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. There's a promise to you as you obey your parents. Respect them. Not that you can't disagree as you get older and you have some of your own ideas and plans, but respect them. And maybe today you've found that you've become kind of a, a demon in the home. Ugly, critical, crabby. Maybe you have tried your best to be a good mother. So you try to be a good father and husband. You young people uh, try hard to be an obedient child. <coughs> but all of these things are uh, as good as they might be. They're not really achievable in a way that gets us to heaven. We don't get to heaven by being a A plus mom or dad or, or a kid. Only through a relationship with Jesus Christ can we, can we uh, be right with God. 
Jesus gave himself on the cross an atonement for sin. He took our spankings. He took our torture, our, our uh, punishment on himself to wash away our sins with his blood. Why did that need to be done? Because it says the heart is deceitful above all things and is desperately wicked. Who's he talking about? He's talking about my heart, your heart, apart from Christ. Empty. <coughs> and so we need to, we need to have Jesus. If you want to be the dad, the mom, the kid in the home that you know you should be, you can't do it by just gritting your teeth and say, oh, I'm going to try hard. It's saying, Jesus, come in and change my heart and make me loving and make me cheerful and make me helpful. Jesus came to set us free and to change our lives by his spirit within us. And so do you, do you know him today? Mom, you have a, a tough job. It's, a, it's, a, it's the most important job. But you need the grace, the strength, the encouragement of the Savior. You need a heart that's, that's set free from guilt and just wanting to, to honor God, even as a mom. And so as we close this uh, morning, let's sing again. You sang pretty well here before we started uh, the sermon. But it's into my heart, into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Maybe this is the first time that you've ever had that opportunity or saw that you needed it. Maybe you have gotten careless and you want to get back to where it needs to be with, with Jesus. So let's, let's sing that uh, chorus too as we close here. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in. end of this service we pray that you would change us that it's not just a, another Mother's Day but it might be a time when moms and dads and children and teens are touched and changed by your love we need you Lord Jesus Without you, we can do nothing. Come into our hearts. Come into our homes. Work in our church family. To the glory of your name. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Test, test. Thank you. As we're all getting ready, um, I just wanted to share one thing with you before our last hymn. One of my classes this past semester was on Trinitarianism, which, you know, going into it, I was like, okay, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you know, piece of cake, right? Now let's talk about that for a semester. Um, it got pretty intense, but if there was one thing that I took away from it, it was the immensity of God's grace and just how awesome that really is. Grace is one of those tough things. It's really sometimes hard to accept and it's hard to grasp and it's hard to really get a feel for what it is. But when you really think about it, when you really put it down, we can do nothing without the grace of God. And that was part of the reason I chose this last hymn. So will you please rise with us and sing Wonderful Grace of Jesus.
Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Thank you. 